Hello everybody, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Let's see, who's all in the chat this morning? Uh, Senor Hepulio, uh, Michael Linsenmeyer, and Radu Fierio. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Good to have you. So, as you can see, we are uh, in orbit of Kerbin with our Stop Too Big craft. And uh, off camera, off stream, I've actually sent up a quick uh, a refueling mission real, here, real quick here. I just wanted to make sure we had enough uh, fuel to get to Minimus and attempt our landing. So, if we take a look at these, uh, I guess we can just start the refueling. Like so. We can see all these guys should be getting liquid fuel and oxidizer, filling up the tanks, giving us some extra DV. Hey, Michael, how's it going, man? I know you've been working on your own KSP, and I see you're you're still determined to uh, to stream KSP 2 on Friday. I'm excited to watch that. I think I'm going to hold off on purchasing it for a while until they get some improvements in place. So I'll be uh, watching your stream for all my KSP 2 stuff. Okay, there's one tank done. Oh, you're not doing it. Okay, you're out of town. All right, then you, that's right. You said you had the retreat. So then uh, on your channel, it says it says you're going to stream that. You probably want to remove that from your scheduled streams because people might be looking forward to it like me. <laughs> so we're going to transfer all the fuel from the refueling, uh, uh, the refueler craft here. We'll leave a little tiny bit to deorbit it, uh, but this craft is very simple. It's just uh, big tanks with a little uh, a little drone inside to fly it up here and get the uh, get the rendezvous. So let's get these tanks all filled up. This craft ended up having a little bit more oxidizer than liquid fuel, uh, so it's it was uh, we didn't quite balance it right. But I'm not exactly sure how to do that. Anyway, so we'll practice that next time, if we if we do something like this again, another single stage to orbit. Let's keep filling this up so it has lots of DV to get to Minmus and land. Oh, you already removed it from the channel. Good news. Okay, well. I'm behind the times. More oxidizer that it doesn't really need here. But we can just reduce the mass on our, our, our bird here to deorbit. Actually, I should probably stop transferring oxidizer to reduce the mass on this vehicle. Uh, all right, so let's just throw liquid fuel in here until these are about matched up, and we'll leave ourselves a little bit to do the deorbit. That looks about right. Okay, so we're, we're leaving ourselves 369 uh, DV. That's probably enough. Let's undock. And now we'll switch over to our little orbiter probe our little refueling probe. And let's, let's get a little bit away. We've got 800 meters per second of DV. That's gonna be more than enough to deorbit. Uh, let's turn SAS on and face retrograde. And we can use our little bit of RCS that we have left to just get a little bit away from uh, the other ship. Uh, so we can just do something like this. Nope. Just get a little bit away from it. And then as soon as we've got a little bit of distance, we will do our retrograde burn to deorbit. Crash into the surface of Kerbin. And this ship's purpose has been served. No, welcome back. Welcome back to, cha uh, to the channel. 
<clears throat> so uh, yesterday, after the stream, I practiced launching this a few more times and managed to get it into orbit. And I've sent up a refueling uh, drone to give it just a little bit more DV to get to Minmus. All right, so this is fine. Uh, let's just blast retrograde here. And we can see our periapsis dropping as we fall away from the other ship. Let's just burn ourselves out. And we can quickly... Uh, I don't know why it's toggling like that. But we can quickly advance time here to see it uh, enter the atmosphere, and now it should definitely be headed down to the ground to crash. Okay. Goodbye, little refueler drone. You were very handy. Okay, so that's deorbiting. Let's return to our other ship. Uh, you are in flight. Game cannot be saved. Okay. Uh, I guess we have to finish our finish our work here. Let's just advance forward and quickly watch it smash into the planets and blow up. You want to see if it survives atmosphere? It would almost certainly not. It is a very, uh, very poorly constructed craft. <laughs> I do not think it would survive re-entry. Or if it did, I would not be able to land it, you know? There we go. There's our deorbit complete. Let's go to the tracking station and switch back to the stop too big. Uh, we've got some debris here. Let's just terminate that, clean things up. Okay, let's go back here and let's see how much DV we have. Uh, 2399, that is a lot. That is more than enough for us to be getting to Minmus and landing. So let's begin plotting our transfer to Minmus. As we can see here, we're in a stable orbit around Kerbin. And with all that nice, lovely refueling, we're going to be able to get to Minmus just fine. So let's take a look at what we've got to work with. Okay, so right away, I think we can maybe do a gravity assist here. Uh, so let's come over, let's see. In a couple of orbits, it'll be like over here. So maybe, maybe we can get away with it. Uh, let's try something like this. Let's add a maneuver here, and let's pop it forward by two orbits so we can get in an Oberth effect burn if we want to. And let's just see if we can get a moon encounter. Somewhere around here. There we go. There's a moon encounter. So as you can see, that's going to give us a lot of delta V to get out towards uh, the Minmus orbit. Uh, what we may have a problem with is our angles. I'm not sure yet. But if we do something like that, it's going to push us out probably too far. Let's just get a little bit of delta V out of, out of this encounter. And let's scale this down a bit. Not sure where Minmus is going to be. But if we did something like this and then added a maneuver here and went out a bit more, how likely are we to encounter Minmus out there somewhere? I think probably not that likely. I think that's too far. So maybe we don't use a moon encounter here. Maybe these angles are all wrong. Uh, let's see. Oops. Let's just uh, let's just play around with this a bit and see if we can get it kind of closer. Is there anywhere on this path that kind of encounters Minmus? I don't think so. Wait. What is that? That's a second moon encounter. That's not what we're looking for. Okay, so I think this is probably too far. Let's swap back to maneuver one here. Yeah, I don't think the alignment is correct here, so probably we're gonna scrap this and just go straight to the moon. Or straight to Minmus, rather. So, 
Uh, if we come back to maneuver one here, actually, let's just let's just start over. So, in, given given that we're trying to get there and we're not going to use the the moon, we need to set it as our target and fix our plane here. <clears throat> so let's come down to the descending node and set up a maneuver to fix our plane. Uh, we will drag this up a bit. Let's pin the descending node. And then let's go in here, start putting in some normal. A little bit more. Point three. Point two. Point one. Uh, I think we might be going too far here. Maybe not. Where is the zero? Hmm, okay, not gonna find the zero. So let's just go to point one, that's good enough. We'll spend as much DV as we need to to get there. Okay, that looks good. So 254.9 meters per second to get our plane change. That's not bad. We've got 2,400, so we've got some to spare. Uh, let's go ahead and let's tweak our engines a little bit. A 22 second burn is okay, but I'd like to reduce this a bit more. Let's turn off the outside engines. and just work with the inside engines. Uh, if we toggle this thrust down to like 60-ish, what does that get us? Still a 25 second, minute, 25 second burn. Let's try 30. Twenty-eight seconds, wow, okay. These are powerful indeed. Uh, let's go down a little bit further. Try 10%. 31 seconds. Hmm. All right. How about five? I'm not sure this is uh, set up correctly. It's not maybe taking into account the fact that the engines are off. All right, so I guess we'll turn them back on. And we'll set everything at five. See what that looks like. It's just a lot of work to kind of tweak every single, all six of these, you know. Okay, so we get this down to five. And we get this down to five. Now we're looking at seven minutes. Okay, so that's way too much. Uh, let's see. Let me catch up with the chat here. My orbits are closer to 90k, 72k, or something like that. One time I tried to use the gravity of the moon to get into orbit with it. Somehow I ended up orbiting the sun. That's when I sacrificed my first Kerbal. Uh, Spaceman, welcome back to the channel. Good to see you again. To get to zero, you have to put your plane change on or A and or D and then slightly adjust orbital position if needed, but point one is nothing really. Yeah, I agree. Uh, okay, so this is at five. This is at five. That's at five. That's at five. Let's just turn the main ones back up, the centers. So if those are at 50, what are we looking at now? Uh, one minute, 50 seconds, not bad. Let's push that up a little bit more. Let's go to like 66 on the two central engines. 126, okay, let's just push these up to 90. So that's interesting. When I when I shut them off, it didn't it didn't include them in the calculation. But when I lowered them way down, then it worked fine. All right. So that's probably one minute six is probably fine. Okay. Uh, let's get to our maneuver node, and we've got the burn in four minutes thirty. Here we go. Okay. Here comes the plane change burn. Let's quick save here. 
And how are we doing for charge? We're okay. Uh, if I need to, I can open the bay doors and extend the uh, solar panels on the rover to build up some more charge. And in fact, maybe I should do that. Uh, there's no reason not to right now. So let's do that. I think I opened the cargo bay. That's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> so I did have to change these to be retractable because otherwise, after deploying, we would never have been able to get back inside. Uh, they are kind of... There we go. So they'll track the sun. That looks good. All right, so we'll get our charge back. It's already charging back up. Okay. Uh, let's quick save. Let's head to our encounter, and I guess we'll just do this manually. Get down to about 20 seconds and resume normal time. Okay, so here comes our plane change burn. Let me zoom out a little bit so you guys don't get flooded with noise. And here we go in. Bah. Oh. Yeah. Bah. Un. Okay. <clears throat> Not too loud at all. So we're going to burn just like this until we hit the... Uh, how do I track this? I guess I need to look at where this is lining up over here. I'll catch up with the chat in one second. I just want to finish this burn accurately, you guys. Well, we've got another 40 seconds. Let me look over quick. What's going on with Jeb? He's been up here for four days and is still ecstatic. That's smart. Jeb's got that. I'm experienced enough to know what sketches look in his eyes. That's true. Uh, hey, Jaco, welcome back to the stream. I'll get to your question in one second. Let me just focus in on this burn real quick. Just want these lines to align here. Nice and exact. 10 seconds left on the burn. There we go. Pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. Uh, so Jaco asks, hey, Jossaway, question. Do you like space games and science fiction? I do. Yeah, I do like that. Um, quite a bit. I, we played uh, Deliver Us Mars on the channel uh, a couple weeks ago and, and really enjoyed uh, playing through the story of that game. Uh, let's see. No says two of your thrusters are still off. Yes, they are actually, I reduced them down to get my, uh, to be able to get more finesse and control on the, uh, on the burn there. Um, so rather than 22 seconds, that was like a minute six. It let me get very close to exact exactly the uh, measurement that I wanted. So these are actually not off. They are, are, are they off? Oh, activate, you're right. Okay, well, thank you for that. Uh, I'm not sure what effect that had on the burn, but hopefully it calculated it reasonably correctly. So now that our plane is correct, now we can do our burnout to Minmus. So it's gonna take us uh, I think it's like five days to get out there, and Minmus will be somewhere around here. So we'll just kind of start over here and start playing around with a maneuver node and see if we can uh, figure this out. I'm actually going to push this two days, two orbits into the future um, so we can kind of estimate where Minmus is going to be and then do our Oberth effect burns. So we just push this out from here. And then we'll kind of mess around until we get an encounter. Might be further along. There it is. Right around there. Okay. So that's going to get us our... That's a moon encounter, actually, somehow. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong thing. That's why. I'm not, I'm not zoomed out far enough. <laughs> uh, so wait a minute. If we tweak that a bit, can we get more... Delta V out of it. Do we want to get more Delta V out of it? I don't think we do. Let's push past it and get out to... See, yeah, the moon encounter is going to throw off our plane entirely. So we don't actually want that. 
Let's push out a little bit more. Okay, so there's something close. Target position at closest approach. So it's a little bit ahead of us here. We come out here and it's there. So let's uh, let's move a little bit left and right and see if we can get this uh, closest approach to be a little bit closer. 5,000 kilometers. 4,000. 2,000. Now this is interesting. That's that's another moon encounter. Let's come in here just a bit. Uh, let's tune this down a bit. Okay, so there's an encounter. Uh, 465 kilometers. That's pretty good. Uh, let's come down here and let's get the escape turned off. I kind of clicked too much there. Minmus escape. There we go. So our Minmus periapsis is at 465. That's going to be just fine. Uh, so if we take a look now at the editor, that's 916 dB. That's, that's way too much. That's a three minute burn. So let's come down here and let's put a, another node earlier and a maneuver here. We'll push this one day forward and we'll put, uh, let's say, I don't know, 450, half of the burn here. And we'll push it forward to, oh wait, hold on. Let's do this. Let's push it forward to here, right on top of the other one, but one orbit earlier. Now let's put the 450 in. And then we go to the second node and we remove 450. So that's going to leave, uh, what, 450 plus 16 is 466? And then we kind of drag it back. Right back to here. Oops. Right on top of the other one. And now we should be pretty close here to where we originally were with our encounter. Let's line these up a little bit. Uh, a little bit more. There we go. So they're right on top of each other. And it looks like we need a little bit more DV. Let's push that out just a bit to get our encounter. And we're very close again. So let's see. Uh, closest approach. We push it in a little bit. there, And there's our encounter. Okay. And then we can do a mid-course correction burn. So we've got two maneuvers here. Uh, and let's get ready to do those. So this is at a minute 43. Uh, I think we can put our engines back up for this a little bit. Let's put our inner set back up to, say, 90, I guess. That's where the other one is, right? 90 and... Put you at 90. Okay, so now we're at a 56 second burn. That's much more reasonable. All right. Uh, let's see... Uh, two of your thrusters still off. J uh, Joshua, do you have someone that control the chat for you or Michael, the main guy? Uh, at the moment, Michael's my only mod, but there's only like four or five people in my chat, so it's not like I need a huge amount of mods. Uh, Spaceman says it's fine because the thrust very less. Uh, no, you can tell there wasn't a fuel bar next to them. Why not want more Delta V? Will you stream KSP2? Uh, okay, so Spaceman, I am going to hold off on purchasing KSP2 because from everything I've seen, it's less fully featured um, at the moment than uh, than KSP. I've watched a lot of the preview videos, and like, for example, planets don't have atmospheres right now. There's no thermal um, anything, and they're missing a lot of the kind of things that I've learned to take for granted for plotting maneuvers. And, and like, I, from what I saw, they don't have the... Um, they don't have this maneuver editor, which is really useful. So what I think I'm going to do instead is I'm going to wait probably six months to a year for KSP2, or really, I'll just keep an eye on it and see how it's doing. And when it's in a state where it's more kind of fit to be played, in my opinion, I will then stream it. 
Um, but what I am going to do is pretty soon after we do a few more missions uh, with this stream, I'm going to have a special mod episode where I install a lot of um, visual overhaul mods and we take a look at what the game looks like, what KSP1 looks like when it's when it's been modded to look good. So that's the plan for that. Uh, no asks, why do more than one burn? So if you do a multi-minute burn, you lose some of the effectiveness of the burn because some of it is spent fighting the gravity and fighting the angle change here around the planet. If we do two burns, one to get out to this larger orbit first, and the second one uh, to actually get out to Minmus, then more of our DV is spent close to our maneuver node. So like this first burn is 56 seconds, right? That means it's gonna be kind of pretty close to here and pretty close to there before we're started and we're done. And that's gonna make it more effective than if I had to start all the way over here and burn out to here. So it's called the Oberth effect, O-B-E-R-T-H. If you want to uh, look up a video on it, it's a more effective, more efficient use of DV to split long burns like that up into smaller ones. Uh, and yes, KSP2 is out t tomorrow. So good luck, guys. Um, if you play it, let me know what your experience is. Okay, uh, now, we need to face prograde here. Let's check on everything. Our electric charge is fine. Our solar panels are doing very well there. Got way more oxidizer than liquid fuel, but we still have enough DV to pull these burns off. So, uh, let's now fast forward. And do our first burn. Okay. All right, so one minute to maneuver number one, which is pure prograde. We are lined up on our, actually, let's line up on the maneuver node here, since we have it. And let's get ready to burn. This is gonna be a 56 second burn. Let's get in there. Okay, here we go. Let you guys see the, uh, the ship do its burn here. And let's, uh, let's real quick, let's rotate so we're kind of having fun here with the angle. There we go, all right. So, burn. Oh, it's struggling a bit. Wow, why is... Uh, oh, it's because I've got RCS on, that's why. It is wobbling a bit here. It's not in the atmosphere, so it can't be that. Are these unbalanced somehow? 90, 90. Uh, 90, 90. Hmm. It's a little bit odd. Just a big, heavy craft, I guess. It's going to make precision burns a little bit harder. Okay, I'm watching this. So we'll watch it go down. And when it gets to zero, we'll stop burning. Okay, that was pretty good. Yeah, it's having trouble keeping itself steady here. Okay, so we've got a second burn coming up uh, in one hour. So we do one orbit on our new orbit here. And then we do our second burn, which is going to take us out to Minmus. And actually, it looks like we're going to have a... Oh, shoot. We're going to have a moon encounter? That's not good. Uh, let's focus on Minmus. What are, what are on the planet? Or on the moon here. Focus view. What is happening here? We're coming in. Okay. It's a very small encounter. Looks like it's throwing us off just a bit. Uh, there's not a lot I can do about it. I think it's fine. Yeah, I, there's not much I can do about it. It's kind of getting in our way. But the periapsis is very high, so we shouldn't have any problems with it. I will quick save here, and then we will uh, let's point at our maneuver node and fast forward. 400 subscribers. Now it's on the dot. Yeah. 
You out of electricity. No, don't forget, you can speed up time to stop any instability. No, you shouldn't. Yeah, no, I think we're I think we're okay here. So we've got another burn coming up. We're facing our maneuver. And it's it's looking much more stable from the map view, so I think we'll do the burn here. Uh, okay, so 30 seconds. Let's jump forward just a skosh. Okay, and here comes our burnout to Minmus with our moon flyby. We want to get into this uh, yellow line here. Yeah, this encounter is very small. It is changing our trajectory a little bit. We're going to be below it. It might pull us up a little tiny bit. Okay, here it comes. Might want to slow this down a little bit near the end. There we go. That is pretty good. Okay, now. I think we skipped the moon encounter somehow. We, t we tweaked it enough. I think we got rid of it. Yeah, okay. Uh, so we're out, of, we're out of maneuvers now. Let's put our mid-course correction in. Over here. And now let's focus in on uh, Minmus. And let's see if we can tweak this uh, correction burn to get us a little bit closer here. So, if I go to maneuver number one and start playing around with stuff, do I want to add uh, prograde here? I do. A little bit of prograde seems good. 12 meters per second. Now we're, we're coming in a little high. Let's, oh, that's too much. Let's drop it down just a bit. That seems pretty good. Pretty close, right? Let's push in a little bit. For a periapsis, that's a hundred... hundred thousand. Let's get a little bit closer. Fifty-seven thousand. That's a good starting point, I think. Uh, we can push it down a little bit more here. Until we're in a nice... I want to be in roughly the same plane as the science station. How does that look? It's going off a little bit. Bring it down. Okay, that's fairly close. That's pretty good. And 52,000 is a good starting point. We can then set up a retrograde burn here to get into an orbit. Actually, we can bring it in just a little bit more. What are we talking about here? 35? 20,000? Sure. Okay, I like that. 17,008. Okay. So, uh, this is a very small amount of, cr of burning here, so we really want to uh, bring our engines way down now. So let's put, uh, let's put these back to zero. Let's put the outer ones to zero. That's easy enough to do quickly. And then the inner ones, uh, we will set very low. Let's set it at like three to start and see how that feels. That gives us a one minute 50 burn. That's a little bit too high. I mean, we want a very fine control, but not that fine. We can always do a little bit more correction if we need to. So let's see what five gives us. One minute, six seconds. There we go. That looks pretty good. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, also, did you put stabilizers? No wings, no atmosphere, because wings be useless. Yeah, you should decouple the wings when out of Atmo. Will you dock to the space station? Uh, I, I didn't think about getting rid of the wings, to be honest. Um, but that's not a bad idea. Uh, as I said, this, this will never go to the atmosphere again. Uh, or if it did, it would crash horribly. It, it's very unwieldy, way too heavy, not, not well balanced. It would be a disaster. I might, just maybe, just might be able to land it. Maybe. Uh, on Kerbin, but I don't, I don't know. It'd be, it would be rough. I'd probably have to quick save and reload a bunch of times. 
Uh, Spaceman asks, will you dock to the space station? Not on this run, no. We're gonna land first. We're gonna use our mining rig to uh, earn up a bunch of fuel. And then we will launch to orbit, and then we will rendezvous with the space station. Uh, your thrusters are attached, is so I don't know. Spaceman says no, then not an SSTO. What does SSTO stand for? Single stage to orbit. So technically it is. I only had one stage and I got to orbit. So it is an SSTO. It's just not a landing SSTO. <laughs> Maybe add a large stabilizer in the next one. Yeah, probably. Uh, but when you hit orbit, then you've achieved and being in space, cut the wings. Also, how's he landing back on Kerbin? Got no shoots. Yeah, so when we want to bring these guys home, they're probably going to stay. Jeb and Bill are probably going to stay on Minmus for a long time, acting as a refueling pair. Uh, but if we wanted to bring them home, we would have to dock them at the space station and then get another craft to bring them home. Uh, more like SSTS. Only takes one stage to reach orbit anyway. Oh, so it's not going back to Atmo. Poor Bill, he's not going to be able to see his family again. <laughs> he might. He might spend a couple of years on the moon mining fuel, but eventually we could bring him back. This thing will have no problem getting on and off Minmus. Uh, we don't need lift. There's no atmosphere anyway. So we'll just uh, we'll just kind of push forward on the runway and then uh, shoot up into the sky with RCS if we have to. Uh, okay, so we've got the burn set up. One day, five hours. Let's point ourselves at our maneuver node, and then we've got plenty of electric charge because of our solar panels. So I'm not even gonna worry about uh, turning off SAS. We are just gonna warp forward. I will quick save here, uh, but let's take a quick look at Kerbin as we go. There she goes, farewell. And now we're one minute out from our burn. Uh, let's switch back over here to watch this happen. Okay, so we want our our burn angle to come in right onto this trajectory. It's going to come in from the right over here. Uh, so we're going to watch it here to make sure we get this right. And we're going to burn in about 40 seconds. Let's push this forward. There we go, down to 10. We're facing our maneuver node. SAS is engaged. Everything looks right. So here we go, five, four, three, two, one, and burn. Okay, going well so far. It's gonna jump out at the last second and use personal as parachute. No, I took away their parachutes actually. <laughs> it bothers me that you have so much weight in the wings when it's never going back to the atmosphere. Yeah, no, I'm sorry, man. This is my first time trying to build one of these things so it was never gonna be perfect. It is, however, gonna get the job done. Uh, Bill's family, if you're watching this, this will be the last time you see him. Don't be a pessimist, space man. I never thought of dropping stabilizers once I got out of atmosphere. Gasp. No, you're a very dramatic viewer. I appreciate that, man. I like having some drama in the chat. Uh, as long as it's game-related drama. Use my proven bounce effect. Yeah, we might be... I'm not sure how this landing's gonna go, to be honest. We might be using the bounce effect. <laughs> The wheels, I think, are going to act more like shock absorbers than actual wheels. Because I think I'm going to have to land on the on the nozzle. Let me slow this down if we can. I think I'm going to have to land on the nozzle and then try and like bounce it forward a little bit. So that it kind of bounces off the wheels. And done. Very nice. Very nice burn. Very cool. All right. So we're going to come in now over to this periapsis at 17. And we're going to circularize. So let's put a maneuver here. And let's burn some retrograde. We've got 12, 1,200 left. That should be more than enough. There we go. There's a there's a nice, simple orbit. It's a little bit of a weird plane, but that's fine. Now, if we go and turn on... Okay, so that's in four days. We can kind of quick save that and back away. Now, let's go to the tracking station. And let's see where we want to land. Uh, I think we figured this out, but... If we turn on the uh, ore resources that we scanned, we want to land at this thing. I think that's what we decided. We want to try and land here. And uh, let's put the cutoff up to 90 and make sure. Oh, maybe not. We want the highest concentration of ore we can get. So I guess we want something over in, over in here. Uh, okay, so this has the two kind of things coming off. 
We want to land right in here. I think we have a flag there. Don't we have a flag there? Uh, Homnet, toggle sites, toggle unknown, flags. We do have a flag. So we want to land at Kermit's lily pad. Okay. So that's kind of the rough area we want to land to make sure that our ore concentration is nice and high. That's 90%. So this whole salt flat here, or mint flat or whatever it is, should be good. All right, so we definitely want to land at Kermit's lily pad. Let's try and, uh, let's go back to the stop too big. Uh, stop too big, Mark II. We'll need to have thrusters attached to main body, not wings, so wings can be decoupled. Now, here's an interesting question. If I de put decouplers on, would the wings have enough stability to actually work? Or would the decoupler take too much stress in flight and just kind of blow up and disappear? Um... I'm not sure that would work. All right, so here's Minmus. And when we come in, can we see the flags here? Is there a way to view the, yeah, I can turn the flags back on. Okay, so there's Kermit's lily pad. That's what we want to get to. So let's set that as our target now. And then where are we gonna have our, so our, actually it looks like our, our orbit here that we're planning to go to is kind of close. We should be able to fix it with a little bit of ascending, a little bit of normal or anti-normal and get ourselves flying over this thing. And then we can just try our landing. Okay. So the other thing we could do, I, no, I don't wanna get too fancy. Uh, let's quick save and let's advance here. Let's face our maneuver node and warp to our 133 meter per second burn to circularize our orbit, or that's our insertion burn. We're not circularizing, it's gonna be elliptical. But our insertion burn will let us kind of mess around with some other things. Okay, let's warp ahead four days. Zoom out a bit and watch this happen. Coming in, coming in. Okay, time warp complete. And we're a minute out. Fine on charge, okay. Uh, oh, you know what? Nuts, I need to up my engines quite a bit. These, we'll put these at 100. We've got less than a minute. Okay, 23 seconds. That's fine, that's fine for this burn. It, it's all right if it's not perfect. Almost screwed the pooch there, but I caught it in time. Let's quick save that. And now we can advance a little bit more and get towards our periapsis and do our insertion burn. Okay. So let's get down under 20 seconds. We're facing our maneuver, SAS is on, this all looks good. And there we are jetting off into the solar orbit and our retrograde burn should bring us into a nice elliptical orbit here. Sweet, done, okay. Now, here's something I just noticed. Uh, we set Kermit's lily pad as our target and now we have an ascending and descending node which is very interesting to me. So, uh, remember that Minmus is rotating, which means we wanna do the, the correction here, I think. Or no, we need to probably, we, need to, we would need to bring this in a little bit. Um, maybe actually, if we come over to the ascending node, then by the time it comes around, it will be in a new position. I guess it won't matter. If our, if we get it to zero, it won't matter. We'll be orbiting exactly at the same location as this thing, right? Our plane will be uh, on the same rotational plane as Kermit's lily pad, which is, it looks like it's close to the equator. So let's just come over here to the descending node and let's see if we can get our plane change in and fix that. Uh, yeah.
That's looking good. Let's switch over to the graphical editor here. Is that going up now? Yeah, 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 okay. Descending node three, four. Okay, so it's out there somewhere. Can we get it to two? No. We can get it to three, but not two. So I don't know exactly where it is. But that'll have to be good enough. That'll be close. 0.3 degrees. Okay, so uh, we want a little bit more fine control. Let's come back to our ship here. And once again, throttle down the engines a bit. Let's go to, sure, 34. Let's try that. I want them equal so that we have even thrust on both sides of our center of mass. 21 seconds. That's still a bit on the high side or low side. Let's go down to 24. And then I'll catch up with chat. There we go. Okay, a 30 second burn, that should be fine. Okay. Uh, bounce effect in the middle ish, struts. You can never not have struts. Yeah, that's another thing. So, KSP2 does not have auto struts, uh, which are super helpful. You have to manually apply all the struts. Now, in the preview videos that I watched, they said the devs are aware that that's an important feature and they're working on it. But, you know, it is an early access build. This, this release that they're releasing tomorrow is missing a lot of features. Uh, Spaceman says, if you can also build rocket style SSTO, but you need a lot of refueling, be back in five, all right. Uh, it's funny how you somehow hit another one of your orbital thingamabobs, for us at least. Probably not for you. Oh, if I slammed into another craft, that'd be really hard. Uh, do half and half to keep the orbit circular, half at AN, half at DN. I don't have auto struts. How do you turn that on? Uh, auto struts are, you just right click on a piece. And you can auto, you can click this control here, and it'll automatically strut for you. Apparently, it'll even do it outside of the uh, the VAB. So, Michael, your recommendation is to to fix up the orbit to keep it circular. So you're saying do half of this burn instead. Uh, okay, well we'll try that. So instead of 42. We will do uh, 21 here. That'll get us halfway. And then we'll go over to the, to the because uh, this is at the descending node. So then we'll go over to the ascending node and do the other half. Sure, we can do that. Now let's face our maneuver and then let's warp forward. I have spent so long on strutting. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty handy feature. Zoom ahead. In the first part of this uh, plane change. So it's still pushing it out a little bit, looks like. But maybe you're saying the other half will kind of shrink this? Or it'll grow the other side, I suppose. Okay, so there's the first half, and now we'll come over to the ascending node and do another maneuver. And here we want to push down, right? Looks like it's kind of still pushing it out a bit, but who knows. Uh, did I go too far with this? Or not far enough? Let me pin the DN here. I went too far. Okay. Can I get it better than 0.3? No, there's no. There doesn't. Seem, there doesn't seem to be better than 0.3. Okay. Well, that's fine. Uh, we can do the second one over here, and then we'll have to come in and uh, probably uh, probably bring our AP in a little bit before we try a landing. How much DV do we have left? A thousand. We're fine. We're fine, you guys. We're fine. Quit worrying. meant about the vid. Ah, I see. Okay. Let's get to this next maneuver. It's actually quite a ways away with this orbit. Four hours, almost a day. 
We are going to get down to the surface and do some mining today, guys. That's the plan. That's what I want to do. I'm going to try to land on Kermit's lily pad and mine some ore. All right. Let's jump forward. There we go. And here comes the burn. Very nice. Okay, so now we're roughly in the right position to land uh, on Kermit's lily pad. And actually, if we... Hang on, let me try this. If I just do my retro burn right now, can I land on it? I can get I mean, I'm not going to land probably on the flag itself. We can land on this area, which is what we kind of wanted anyway, right? Um, how close are we? Now, from what Michael told me, I want to be about 20 degrees away, so I might be too close here. So if Kermit's lily pad is the bottom, that's 90, that's 45, something like that. Maybe I want to do a burn here, like a retro burn. I did a quick save, so let's kind of advance forward a little bit here. The stop too big. Let's get you a little bit closer. 20 degrees-ish. I don't know, maybe just a little bit more than 20 degrees? Because we're still pretty far out here. Let me just try burning here and see what happens. Uh, the other thing I should do is power up all my engines so I can get a full burn going. Okay. Let's quick save that. Let's see what this does. Can we land down by Kermit's lily pad? So we're facing retrograde. Let's just burn a bit. Okay, I think we can. Let's get it a little bit closer. Something like that. And then let's see if we can... Uh, let's see how this plays out. Uh, okay, so upside down is kind of okay, I guess, but... Uh, so I'm going to extend the landing gear here. There's no atmosphere. But the idea is to kind of get close to the surface, you know, hovering like two, three meters off, and then pop forward. And, uh, oh, wait a minute. You know what I should do? I should probably retract and close these for landing. But I want to kind of pop forward onto the, onto the, the, uh, the wheels. Actually, this turn probably was pointless because we're going to turn more as we subtract these. Hopefully, we don't break them or break anything landing here. Let's close you up and close you up. I don't know if this is going to work, guys, but we're going to try it. All right, so you can't actually see your target on the, on the world map like this. Like, I can't see Kermit's lily pad right now. I think it's on the other side of the horizon, sort of past us. Uh, but I think we're landing roughly over there, is the, is the idea. Uh, we probably need to... F yeah. Oh, no, we're, we're going this way. Yeah, because we're facing retrograde. So we're going over that, over that mountain-y thing. Uh, okay. We might, we might end up landing backwards. I don't know exactly how this is going to work. I'm going to try some stuff here. Let's zoom forward a bit. Yeah, we're like, we're going over this mountain and then we're going to burn. Let's switch to, yeah, there we go. Let's switch to that terrain view. Okay. And now let's slow down. We might, you know what we might do? We might land actually backwards and roll backwards on the wheels. That might work. There's no atmosphere, so why not? 
Uh, your initial orbit wasn't circular to start with. Sorry. Hey, no worries, man. I under I think I understood what you were trying to tell me. Um, why did the Kerbal astronaut become a chef? Because he wanted to launch a souffle into orbit. <laughs> if you have a circular orbit to half and half, that will grow both sides evenly. Ah, that makes sense. Yeah, okay. The landing numbers I use are for rocket landing. I assume no liability on SSTOs. <laughs> you should try animations in KSB2 you can find on YouTube. Okay. Uh, Larry says it's brick with wings. Yes, it is. Planes use full flaps down to air break an atmosphere, but there is no atmosphere here. All right. Let's let's burn a little bit here. We're kind of close to where we want to be. I'm going to do this by feel, you guys. All right, I'm going to get down to like, sure, 84. Okay. And then I'm actually not going to... I think I'm not going to go retrograde here. I'm going to go normal to reduce my vertical velocity. Um, no, I don't want normal. I want radial out, right? That's the one that I want. Yeah, radial out. Okay. So we're going to keep our... Our vertical velocity, that's what we're going to fix. We're going to allow ourselves to be moving that way a bit so that we ran, we land on the wheels backwards. I'm trying this, you guys. I'm going to try and land this brick backwards. We're going to see if this works. Uh, okay. So something like this. And as we get lower towards... The ground. Let me run this forward a bit. I don't know if this is going to work or not. Okay. Uh, let's just let's just face it uh, up at the sky here. Okay, so I'm going to start burning a bit here. Okay, we're still falling, but we're falling slowly. Our vertical speed's around, what, 50-ish something? 50 meters per second, closer to the ground? I don't think, yeah, you know what? We're going too far. I think we need to hit some retrograde here. Making this up as I go along, hoping that I don't crash, but I probably will. Let's burn a little bit here. Okay, that's good. That's good. Okay, let's see what happens if we come in like this. And you know what else we can do? We can use a little bit of RCS to slow our descent speed, our descent rate. Can't see the ground very well, but we're as close to horizontal as I can get. I'm gonna turn RCS on and we're gonna, we're gonna hit K, push ourselves up from the ground a bit. Slow our descent. I'm gonna try to use the RCS here. I don't know what's happening. No. Okay. Well, <laughs> we came in too hot. Came in too hot, you guys. I want to try that again. That is not that is not slowing. Yeah, no, I saw that. I saw that. Okay, let's try that a little bit one more time. Where are we now? Did I Do I have I need to redo the Okay, I need to redo the burn here. So we need to face retrograde, which we are. And I did it right around here, so let's just do it again. That looks that looks good. That looks better. I want to be a little closer to this side. Okay, so let's. I I, I think the I think the idea was fine. I just had too much. Uh, I was going down too fast, and I can fix that. I can fix that. I think I can make this work. Let's get turned around. 
this is this is a novel attempt for me. This is a lot of fun. I don't know about you guys. I'm having fun. <laughs> And that's the best kind of explosion. Holy crap. Wait for orbit to be in sunlight. Fast forward a bit. Did you play with fireworks? Uh, I I fired off... One, if you're talking about the in-game fireworks, I did fire off one of those just to see what it was like. Uh, it was not that exciting. I mean, it was fine. It is it is what it is. Let's close this up. And let's close that up. Nope. Uh, and then our we need to deploy our gears. Okay, let's try this again. I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna quick save here. So we can try it again from this position. Let's see. So we need to get over that mountain without falling. So that's gonna be fine. Uh, let's go a little bit further past the mountain, and then we'll burn a little bit more. Slow ourselves down. Okay, so I think what I want is a horizontal velocity under 30 meters per second and then a vertical velocity as low as possible. Um, so I'm actually going to wait a little bit more. I don't want to land on this, this thing. Let's go a little bit further here. Okay. And now let's... You know what? Let's turn on this off. Let's not burn retrograde here. Let's actually burn... No. No, retrograde is fine. Well, no, I don't want to... I don't want to... Yeah, retrograde is fine here. Okay. I need to burn quite a bit quickly. Okay, there we go. So now we're, we're approaching pretty slowly. Let's swap over here and let's lower, let's lower our descent rate while keeping our horizontal velocity. Okay, so from here, we're gonna burn straight up. And I wanna see what's the lowest we can get our velocity here so I have some idea of how fast we're falling. We're still moving sideways. Okay, this is this is okay. This is okay. I can make this work. Actually, zooming out might help me here. Yeah, I actually want to fall a little bit more first. So moving this way is fine. It's the up and down that I need to fix. So let's get a little bit lower. I might not be far enough, actually, to hit the flat part. We might have burned too much too early. Um... Let's make sure we're on the right thing. Okay, so 900 meters per second. 800. 700. Okay, let's burn here. Okay, so I don't know if you saw that, but it kind of topped out. It kind of slowed down. I want to watch our vertical here as well as we get closer. So we're falling at 10 meters per second. Doing this in the dark is extra fun. Okay, there we go. Allow ourselves to fall a little bit more. We need to get down under like 100. I really don't know if this is going to work at all, you guys. <laughs> no atmosphere so retro, your burn off. My wish has been fulfilled. You did a barrel roll. <laughs> Do a hop, skip, and a jump. Do you have lights? No, I don't have anything like lights. Okay, let's slowly slow our descent. Okay, we've got a little bit of a uh, little bit of descent going. That's okay. We want to be as close to zero at around 10 meters as we can get. This is going okay. This is going okay. Uh, 
Okay, 40 meters. 33, 31. So at the last second, I need to pitch forward, basically. Twenty meters. Okay. Pitch forward. Nope. I hit the I hit the slope. Okay, hold on. Well, we kind of landed here. Can I get RCS to help me out? Uh oh no. Oh no. Pitch forward, pitch forward. Come on, you can do it. Okay, we're going to land backwards. That's the idea. Oh dear, we're very high again. Oh, that's not good. Other way, other way, other way. Okay, RCS, maybe help me out. RCS is messed up. It's not strong enough. We're hitting too fast. Same problem as last time. Ah, oh, no. Damn it. I was really close. Okay, so part of the problem was I waited too long to do the twit, the turn. And the other problem was we burned too early and we were over that slope. So one more attempt and I think we've got this, you guys. I think I can get this. Okay, now we need to slow down pretty quickly. Let's burn. Okay, there we go. All right. Uh, now I want to, once again, I think this time I'll leave a little bit of a forward pitch instead of aiming directly up, just so that no, no, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. We'll do it. We'll do it the same way, but I'll just let it happen a little earlier. Come on. We can do this. We can do this. This is going to work. This is going to work. Yeah, the lack of lighting doesn't help, but it is. that is what it is. Okay. Okay, okay, we're gonna get this. Okay. Get down to around 100 meters and then I wanna level out the, the vertical. Okay, all right. So now we do the same thing as last time, but we a little bit earlier start our start our SAS turn. So I'm just watching this 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 dial right here. I want to keep this as close. To, I want. I think if this is at zero around ten meters, and then we start our turn, it should be fine. I'm just tweaking. Tweaking the uh, the burn a little tiny bit. Okay, and then pitch forwards. Come on, you got it, you got it, you got it. Pitch forwards, pitch forwards. Ten was almost too much, uh, too little. Maybe fifteen would be better. But look at that, backwards landing, baby. Landed on the surface without exploding the entire ship. How about that? Damn. That was cool. Backwards landing onto the wheels. Super dope. Let's throw the brakes on. See how long it takes us to slow down on this ice. 
probably quite a while, right? And actually, we can because we're backwards, we can just kind of burn a little bit here. Yeah. Landed on Minmus. There we go. Are we still moving? I can't tell. No, we're, we're at a complete stop. Uh, okay. So, quick save. Very cool. Oh, wow. I can't believe that worked. Uh, we do the same thing as last time, but better. Nice, sweet. Hey, J Crown, welcome to the channel, and thank you for very much for the plot. If you click target on the nav ball, it will switch to, switch to surface mode. Target on the nav ball. Oh my god. I didn't know you could do that. I've been playing this game for like 40 hours. I did not know you could toggle it like that. Holy, holy crap. That's so awesome. <laughs> and I feel so dumb for not knowing. Okay, well, uh, here's what we're going to do now, guys. Uh, we're going to quick save. We're going to uh, go to the Space Center and make an actual save. Uh, I'm going to save the stream here because that was that was a pretty cool achievement. Actually landing this thing on Minmus, wow, I'm pretty stoked. Uh, let's save the game as stream. And then let's go back. All right, so <clears throat> uh, let's turn our flags off now. We don't need those. Let's return to the stop too big. And let's wait for morning. Don't feel dumb. There's like no explanation. <laughs> no says, I don't think you count as a noob anymore with 40 hours. But like, like look at this SS, this quote unquote SSCO. It's a giant mess. This was the first one I ever built. So I'm still, uh, I'm still a noob in many ways. There's a lot to learn in this game. Okay, let's, uh, let's fast forward and get some sunlight down here on Kermit's lily pad and our... Uh, Let's see, how long do I have to wait? Oh, I have to wait quite a while here. You know what? Okay, forget that. I guess we're just going to work in the dark. Although, no, he needs solar panels to work, doesn't he? No, we need to We need to wait for uh, sunlight. We need to wait for Minmus to turn around here. Let's skip forward just a bit. And we should have a morning here. There we go. Okay. Yes, very cool. All right, so we are going to open our cargo ramp. And then I can't, I think I, it was it was zero, right? Zero was the undock key. I might not have set it up. We can do it manually. Bill, this is pretty funny, actually, if you think about it, right? Bill, because this is the 13, this mission is 13 days long. So Jeb obviously was sitting in the cockpit. Bill was sitting in the dark facing this wall for 13 days. <laughs> ah, Kerbals are funny, man. Okay. Let's get mining. Come on, you can do it. There's too much torque on these on these wheels. Come on, you can get out. You can do it, buddy. You can get out. What is it doing? It's like it's like stuck on the ramp or something. There we go. Come on. Now go down the ramp. Come on. It's like there's some weird physics interactions going on here. Come on, buddy. You can do it. You can leave the cargo bay. Come on. This is, I spent all this time to get here and the friggin' thing can't even get out of the cargo bay. Come on, get down to the surface. You can do it. Oh, his brakes are on. I'm an idiot. That's why. His brakes were on, guys. It wasn't wasn't a weird physics interaction. I just forgot to turn his brakes off. What is going on here? Why is he... Okay, well... 
Is the game done being weird now? Okay. Uh, so let's ex let's extend our solar panels. And as we learned from Michael, we want to turn sideways so that they can both hit. Oh, wow. This is nuts. There's like no traction on this ice at all. Okay, there we go. So now we're getting power. Uh, let's do a scan here. Run analysis. Or 13.68%. Wow. Okay, so this is great. We're going to be able to get lots of ore here. <clears throat> uh, Spaceman says, yes, af even after 60 to 100 hours, you can learn something new for the game. Uh, Bill's hardcore. Boeing, the landing gear and rover wheels are so good in KSP2. Yeah, I have seen the new wheels. Those do look a lot better. Lure him out with treats. Lol, we'll have RCS on the miner. No, there's no RCS on the miner. Okay. So now we're going to hit one to deploy our drills. We can hit two to activate them, and these should be on now. Yep, the radiators are disabled, and so is the Convertotron. So everything is running. And shockingly enough, we're actually generating extra charge here. Okay. So, and you can see we're, we're producing oxidizer and liquid fuel. So this is working, you guys. We're on the moon on Minmus, and we're mining at Kermit's lily pad on the Great Flats. Fantastic. fan friggin -tastic. I love it. I love it. Okay. So if we zoom out to the map view and kind of uh, advance time a bit here, we can watch our... Oh, it's going to take a while, huh? Yeah, it's going to take a while. So it took 14 days last time for him to fill it up. I don't know how long it's going to take. Now he's going to lose the sun here. Then he comes. So that's one day. So hold on, maybe the ore is just really rich here because after one day on Minmus, he's almost, uh, yeah, we got the insufficient power shutting down thing. So as soon as the electric charge is back, there we go. We need to uh, hit two, I think, and then that's still going, that's still going. Yeah, so as long as I hit two, these start going again. And if we work fast enough, uh, it seems to skip past that weird shutdown thing. But it looks like he only needs two days at this location on Minmus. It must be a much richer ore location than the uh, test site we used at the landing pad or the runway. That's right. That's right. The runway had a concentration of like 2.5. And this is 13 and change. This is amazing. So we're getting really good... Uh, Really good, really good ore concentration. We're generating quite a lot. We're going to be fill up here in just a second. Uh, so there we go. Just like that, after two days, he's managed to completely fill the tanks. Okay. So, let's hit uh, three, shut everything off. Did that retract the drill? Uh, yeah, that retracted the drill. Okay. I do wish I had a little bit of lights here. I should have put some lights on the front, really. There's like one little teeny tiny light uh, here at the, at the hatch. Okay. So, theoretically now... We retract these solar panels, right? Retract solar panel. And you know what? I'm just going to wait for daylight. I'm going to wait one more day. It's fine. We can just warp like two and a half, three days or whatever it takes. And so once we get the hang of it, we can do this pretty quickly. Okay. So now we've got some light. Now comes the final test. Can we get this ore back into the shuttle? All 
Are we going to be able to redock and transfer all of our fuel into the lifter? Also, the lifter never really needs to carry this again. We can launch without it. We can just leave it here on the surface and then try to fly back to it. Might Maybe maybe we take it with us just so that we, we don't have to spend hours like driving across to find it or whatever. Okay. Moment of truth. Reconnected. Look at that. Yeah, F yeah. Let's friggin' go. Okay. Well, let's take our full tanks here. And let's start filling up everything else. It's going to take a long time and many trips to fill these up. But we, we can we can get there. <clears throat> so wait a minute. Uh, that's one tank and that's the other one. So this is now empty and this one needs to go in. Yeah, so this the capacity here is not that great. It's uh, we've got two FLT 400s. And we're trying to fill up one, two, three, uh, nine, eight. We're trying to fill up 18, uh, 800. So it's going to take us 18 round, 18 like mining sessions to get this done. So this is not the most efficient. Um, we can pro we'll probably only use this once and then we'll try to come up with a better solution. Probably a surface mining station with a lot larger tanks that can mine and, and put together a bunch of stuff and a better a better refueling uh, uh, vehicle because uh, it's going to take us 18 round trips here with the uh, with this guy to get this done. Uh, but that's that's the that's the proof of concept. That was my first attempt at building, uh, you know, building insight resource u utilization ISRU to extract ore, convert it to fuel and then refuel my launching ship. So I'm pretty happy with, with the fact that we got this working at all. And I learned a lot from building both of these crafts. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, that's pretty exciting. So guys, I'm not going to sit here and make you watch me do 18 of these round trips. We'll do, we'll do one more just to see how fast we can get it. So we undock, right? Uh, I have to select the right piece. Uh, go away. So like that piece, then we uh, do we undock from here? Undock, there we go. And then we back out. We turn our brakes off and back out. Uh, oh, he's out of electric charge. Oh no. Okay. Well, we have to kind of wait and see if he. That's something to be wary of. We, if we get stuck, he won't be able to deploy. That would be really bad. Okay, so we definitely want to make sure we have a full electric charge before we dock. That's important. Fortunately, it looks like we're going to be able to deploy this. Oh, no, we're not. Oh, sh shoot. Oh, no. Oh, wait, I'm not, I'm not controlling him. Never mind. There we go. Okay. Oh wait a minute! It's the other ship that has no electric charge. This had the, this had a little bit. Okay. Well, we'll have to we'll have to see about that. Maybe we can can we can you transfer electric charge? All right. Well, let's deploy and get drilling. And then let's warp. Uh, let's just create a, a, an alarm for three days from now. Huh, we still got that insufficient power shutting down thing. Yeah, okay. Sure. Let's get into the sunlight. Whoa, what happened there? What the heck? 
Was it, was that heating? What was that? Bill is dead? I don't know what just happened. It must have been a heating thing. Hold on. Uh, have Bill, you have to switch. Yeah, overheated. It's reddish, so overheat. Okay. Uh, so wait a minute. This is, this is active. This is active. That's active. Cooling, um, wait, where's the drill? It's operating at max efficiency. All right, so maybe, maybe operating this, like maybe something with the, uh, Maybe something with this fast speeding things up that radiators don't work. Okay, let's zoom out to the map view here and let's just zoom forward by three days and see what happens. So insufficient power shutting down, yeah, okay. So we're still seeing that problem. So we'd have to like manually control it, I guess. Uh, where's the, let me go over here. So this is, this says cooling 70%. Uh, I need to look at the thermal overlay, I think, temperature overlay. So it look, it, it sort of looks like it's working, right? Like the, the radiators are radiating heat. Bill Kerman's very hot, apparently. But the radiators... So when it says cooling, is that a good thing or a bad thing with that number going up? You think it'd be harder to be overheat with that being in the vacuum? Look at the radiator by the drills. Wheels are too close to your drills. Heat is transferring to wheels. This number going up, is that a good thing or a bad thing? This is cooling at 45%. Oh, there's a problem. So my my shutdown button. So when the drills shut down, this thing does not shut down. These are still climbing. Let me see what happens if I speed up here. Yeah, they eventually, now that I shut that thing down, they eventually, there we go, okay. So I'm, I would have to like manually, I'd have to manage this myself. I'd have to wait for sunlight, right? Then I check my levels. I keep the heat, the thermal overlay on. Now we turn everything on. So I hit my two key that turned on ISRU for liquid fuel and oxygen. It turned on my drill. So everything's on. And then I kind of warp forward to sunset. Right, and now I turn everything off. And I have to turn this off manually because it's not in the... No, that, that time it worked. Oh, because I did it. it. I did put it in the action group. <clears throat> okay, I understand what happened. So when I hit the three key, all things shut off at the same time, which is what I want. Uh, before, these, these shut off because we ran out of power. Somehow this thing kept running. There, I guess it doesn't have an auto shut off or whatever. It kept generating heat. So we go to nightfall and then we wait for dayfall as everything cools down. We turn everything back on with two. Zip forward to nightfall again. Hit three, wait a minute. Now why didn't it generate any ore? Oh, cause two, okay, so two, my two action group is wrong. Is there, you guys, do you know, is there a way to edit action groups? Um, is there a way to edit action groups uh, in like in the field? Can I can I edit my action groups here, or is there a way to do that? Hmm. Okay. Zip four to daytime. Okay. So now, if I hit two, must complete action before activating deploy drill. Okay. That, I don't remember undeploying it. One, two, that's running. Okay, let's zip, okay, so let's zip forward. Okay, so as night falls, now I hit three. That stopped that. 
Okay, so I do one, two to start, and then three to stop. And we're, we are almost full again. Okay, so that would be that would be the pattern. I wouldn't be able to like automate this. I'd I'd have to babysit it like 18 times. So we're almost done here. One more day would be enough. Let's get some light out here. There we go. Okay. So I do one and two and warp forward until my tanks are full. Nope. Two. Why is this not working? No, it is working. One, two. Okay, I had to wait for it to finish deploying before I hit two. And now we go forward until the tanks are full. Okay, there we go, all right. And our charge is full and it's daytime, so I'm gonna stop everything here. We're gonna do one last thing before I before I call it. We are going to uh, retract our solar panels. This is off, right? Yeah, that's off. This is radiating in a bunch of heat, but that's okay. Bill's getting a little hot, but that's okay too. Kerbals are sturdy. Uh, should I give it a little bit of time to radiate some heat? Probably a little bit, right? Just let it cool down just a, uh, just a bit. I want to still have light when I when I do this. Okay, there we go. That's that's cooler. All right, so now let's go back in. Uh, let's turn our brakes off and go back in. Redock. We'll transfer all this fuel. And the other thing I want to try is I want to try two things. I want to try transferring some electric charge to the la lander. And I want to try converting some of this ore into mono propellant. Because if we're connected, we should be able to fill up the mono tanks over here. Okay. Bouncing around. That's fine. Okay, just don't flip. All right, let's see if we can we can dock again. Okay, there we go. Now, if I click on this thing's battery, here's the ZK1 rechargeable battery bank, and then I click on, I'll click on the cockpit here. It has no electric charge. I can indeed transfer electric charge. That is so cool. <laughs> I love that. That is so cool. Uh, let's see, bad efficiency dropping on the drill. Turn off the converter, should save power, nothing on the side menu. I'm a go now, try not to explode anything. All right, thanks for stopping by now. And Bob Schwan, I see you're here briefly. Uh, Michael Linsmeyer says, it's on the bar to the right, Bill needs to move. Bill's fine, Bill's fine. Okay, so we transferred some electric charge. I love, that is so, that is so cool, okay. And then let's transfer all of this fuel that we've kind of got set up here. So liquid fuel. Are those, those are not full. Yeah, okay. So the fuel tanks, we're gonna transfer all the fuel. It's gonna take, take a couple runs to get these all filled up. <clears throat> uh, let me redo this. So that one and then these three. Out and out. But they are filling up. They are getting they are getting more fuel. Uh, his helmet exploded last time from heat. Uh he's okay, I think. I mean we can we can have him. We can have him take a little a little breather, sure. Uh, I can't I can't Ava him from this location. I'd have to undock and control. So now, while we're connected, uh, the mono propellant here for the for the lander is at seventy one point two nine. So, what I'm wondering is, can if I turn this on to start ISRU? Yes, look, it's starting to fill up the cockpit with mono propellant from the ore. God damn, this is such a cool system. It took forever to build all this stuff and get it here, but now that it's here. 
That's really cool. We can refill the RCS as well. So neat. Okay, stop IRSU. And then these fuel tanks are both empty. Okay, so now we're going to undock again. And I will have Bill take a breather from all this heat, since you're so concerned, Michael. Uh, the ship doesn't have any solar. The only solar is on the rover. It's not like bright yellow. Let's activate radiator, activate radiator. Turn sideways here. Oops. And we can activate this radiator. Put our brakes on. Activate this radiator. Uh, we can extend our solar panels. It's, a, I, I admit, it's a little hot. Uh, let's have him leave the seat. Okay. So there you go. Now he's now he's off the drill. He should be okay. He should he should cool down a bit. And quick save this and let's let's go ahead and let's let's zoom forward a little bit. Let's just watch him cool down. Okay, so now he's no longer super hot. Now he's in the now he's in the red instead of the orange. And if I turn off the thermal, you'll see he's just fine. I just had the thermal overlay on, so even even at um, they're, they're like resting temperatures. This like looks looks red on the thermal because compared to the surrounding ice and vacuum, they they have lots of heat. This is this is him being normal. This red color. So anyway. Uh, guys, I'm going to call it here. That was uh, that was fun. We actually friggin' managed to do this, which is shocking to me. Clearly, we did a lot of things wrong. Uh, our lander's kind of a joke. <laughs> um, it, it managed to get down, but it's going to take forever to fill it up with this tiny little rover. So what we really want is a surface installation, and apparently this is a very good location. The other thing we could do with this rover, since it has the surface scanner, is we could drive around and look for spots that have the highest ore concentration. But I mean, the 13 point whatever here is pretty pretty solid by my book. Um, so we could we could build a huge like space station or, or, or refueling mining station here. We could build like really big rockets with huge tanks and lift them out here, land them here, and then have kind of like a landing pad where something similar to this could roll up and connect and refill. Uh, but for now, our first attempt at uh, at mining and, and refueling in situ has been successful, so I'm excited about that. Probably off stream, I will do a bunch of runs here to get this thing filled up, because actually this thing, when it's full, is gonna have quite a lot. Uh, so that's 18 of these 800 tanks. That's quite a lot, quite a lot indeed. So we'll refill all these, probably off stream, like I said, and then the next kind of thing we're gonna look at is going to be uh, another Duna mission, and this time we're going to land. So we're going to take all this fuel up to Minmus orbit. We're going to bring our Duna vehicle into Minmus orbit. They're going to rendezvous, and uh, and then we're going to have you know nine thousand DV or whatever, ten thousand DV to go to Minmus to go to Duna and back. And this time we're going to land. We're going to plant a flag. It's going to be awesome. Anyway. That's going to be it for today. Thank you all for being here. Bob Schwann, no, Michael Linsenmeyer, uh, Jay Crown. Uh, who else was in here? A bunch of other folks. I think Pandy and Spaceman was here. Uh, well, anyway, everybody who showed up, I really appreciate it. I'm glad you guys were here with your comments. And uh, I will be streaming tomorrow when we will be looking to, I guess, launch our, our Dune or build, probably build a Duna craft and then launch it to Minmus orbit to meet our refueling bird here and uh, get it all fueled up and ready to go. So that's the plan for tomorrow. Uh, happy Friday, enjoy the rest, or happy Thursday, enjoy the rest of your, uh, your day. And uh, thanks again for being here, we'll see you next time. Take care everybody.